Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at what optical isomers are, the properties of optical isomers, chiral centres, and then finally we're going to summarise. If you've watched our video on stereoisomerism of complex ions in the transition metal section of the course, we introduced the idea of optical isomerism. Let's define it again here by saying that optical isomers are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. Let's take a closer look at what we mean by that. We'll illustrate the point with this carbon, which is the central grey atom shown here, and it has four different groups attached, shown by these balls of different colours and sizes. What we've done with the molecule on the left to create the molecule on the right is reflect it through a mirror plane between the two objects. If you imagine the reflection of this molecule in the mirror, we're still going to have this big green one closest to the mirror, the smaller green one pointing up, and then we're going to reflect the other two. So we have the red one closest to us and the maroon one furthest away. Now we've created this molecule by reflecting the other one, let's rotate it to try and match it up with the original molecule. So what we've done here is rotated this carbon to try and line it up with the other one. But as we've turned it round to put the green atoms on the same side, so they're both pointing to the right, our pinkish maroon atom is now pointing out towards us, whereas in the other one it's pointing away from us. As you can see, it's impossible to realign these two different isomers, and the name we give them is enantiomers. Another way of getting your head around this concept is thinking about the macroscopic example, which means the sizes we're used to in the real world, which is our hands. We have a left hand and a right hand, and although they are basically identical, they are mirror images of each other. So if you try now, you will not be able to turn one hand so that it is exactly the same as the other. The thumb will be on the wrong sides and the fingers will go in different directions. This is why when we have gloves, we must put the right glove in the right hand, or indeed the left glove in the left hand. Because if we tried to put a wrong hand in the wrong glove, then we're not going to get a fit. So now we've recapped what optical isomerism is, let's have a look at the properties of these different isomers. Both of them have exactly the same chemical properties, and they tend to have similar physical properties, although we'll look at a difference in physical properties in a little while. The main thing about optical isomers that's interesting is that they have drastically different biological properties. So limonone is a good example of this. We have two different optical isomers of the limonone where you can see here that one of the isomers has this carbon bond coming out towards us, whereas the other has it going into the page. If we turn this over so they were pointing in the same direction, this part of the molecule would no longer match up with the other side. One of these isomers smells to us like oranges, whereas the other smells like pine trees. These aren't scents that you would count as particularly similar, but they come from more or less the same chemical, just with a different orientation in space, and we smell them so differently. An infamous example of this type of isomerism acting differently in biology is thalidomide. You may have heard of thalidomide, which was a drug that was developed and tested for treating nausea in pregnant women. One of the isomers was safe, however the other isomer was incredibly dangerous. With the other isomer, birth defects were caused, and even if mothers were given the safe isomer, the bodies converted it back into a mix of the two. So there was no escaping the fact, and lots of women were given this drug, which caused birth defects. 
A main difference in physical properties, although we said they are largely similar, is that one isomer will rotate plane polarized light clockwise, whereas the other will rotate it anti-clockwise. Now remember, light is made up of lots of different oscillations in many different directions. However, we can pass it through this sort of polarizing filter, and this restricts the direction of oscillation to, in this case, just up and down. Now, if we take this polarised light and pass it through our samples of the different isomers, one of them is going to rotate it anti-clockwise and one of them is going to rotate it clockwise. An interesting effect of this is if we have a 50-50 mix where we have equal amounts of each of the isomers, then the effects will cancel each other out and the light will not be rotated at all. It will pass through unhindered. We call this type of mixture, where it's 50-50, a racemic mixture. So if we passed plain polarised light through an even mix, we would not see any effect. When we introduced isomerism in this video, we gave the example of a carbon with four different groups attached to it. And in fact, this is a necessity to form something that has an optical isomer. We must have a carbon with four different groups attached in organic chemistry. And we call these carbons the chiral centres of the molecule. So if we look at the example here, we can see that this carbon has a 1, 2, 3 propyl group attached and a methyl group attached, as well as a hydrogen and an NH3 group. This means that it has four different groups and therefore will have an optical isomer. These molecules are quite simple and small, but we can have large molecules with more than one chiral centre involved. Chiral centres are asymmetrical, and so we cannot have symmetry in a molecule that is going to have a chiral carbon. We'll label chiral carbons with a star, and this is a very common thing to do. So in this molecule here, because of the double bond making it asymmetric along this line, this carbon, shown by the star here, has effectively four different groups attached. It has a CH3, a hydrogen, and then if you go in different directions around this ring, you will encounter different groups in different orders. So, this contains a chiral carbon. However, if we removed this double bond from the molecule, like so, we now have the carbon attached, the hydrogen, but if you go in different directions around this ring, there is no difference. It has a line of symmetry down the middle because you encounter the same groups either way round. This means that there is no chiral carbon. One example of molecules that often contain chiral carbons is amino acids, and in fact, with the exception of glycine, they all have a chiral centre, and are usually made in labs in racemic mixtures, which, remember, means that we have 50% of each type of isomer. So on the left here, we show glycine, which is where the extra group on the carbon is also a hydrogen. So we do not have four different groups. So this has no chiral center. But then all other amino acids have a different group than the hydrogen attached to the carbon. So they will have four different groups. And therefore, this central carbon will be chiral so we will have at least one chiral centre. There could be more chiral centres in the R group of the molecule, but unless we specify the amino acid, we don't know what that is. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.